Good morning, people. This is Jeff Hale with Comprehensive Outdoors. And today on this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Chiapa Double Badger 22 long rifle on the top barrel, 20 gauge on the bottom. For those of you that don't know, the Chiapa Double Badger is a combination gun. And there's lots of types of combination guns out there. Some are extremely expensive. There's one made by BRNO, or several made by BRNO company that are thousands and thousands of dollars. There's the old Savage Model 24s, uh, where they had all sorts of configurations, 22 over 410, 223 over 12 gauge, all sorts of things. Uh, Savage also recently came out with a Model 42 where they tried to recreate the old model Savage 24, but I think they only offer it in 410 over 22 mag and 410 over 22 long rifle. Then there's the whole category of survival rifles out there. You have the AR-7, which is a small compact rifle that comes apart and fits its in its own buttstock and it shoots 22 long rifle and 22 mag, I believe. And then you have the old Scout survival rifle uh, that I think was a 410 over 22 mag, 410 over 22, and some other things. So the reason that I decided to <clears throat> look at combination rifles was because I was on a hunting trip, my deer hunting trip, and uh, we had dropped somebody off and they were going to go ahead and go go up and over the top of this ridge and we were going to park on the other side and pick them up. And so I'm sitting there in the truck with my buddy <clears throat> Jim Corsetti and we're chatting and we're waiting and we see it about 50 yards away these two pheasants come out of this patch and we could have easily if we had shotguns walked over there and harvested the two pheasants. Pheasant season was open, we had licenses in our pocket there were two pheasants but all we had were deer rifles and we weren't about to shoot um, pheasants with deer rifles I started thinking wouldn't it be nice if I had a gun that I could take with me that wasn't a full size shotgun right because when you go deer hunting you got so much stuff in the car you don't want to bring another full-size rifle or shotgun so that wouldn't it be nice to have something that's compact relatively lightweight doesn't take up a lot of space and could be used for opportunistic hunting. Other examples are I've been out walking around, scouting for deer, grouse season's open, I got a grouse license, and boom, there's one, but I don't have anything to shoot it with, or rabbits, or gray squirrels. And don't laugh, don't laugh. If you've never eaten gray squirrels, then you don't know what you're missing. Um, so I like to hunt a lot of small game, and um, I needed myself an opportunistic gun. And I looked at lots of them, and I decided on the Chiapa Double Badger for price, and function and I decided on the 22 over 20 gauge and the reason I'm doing this review is there was lots of reviews over the Chapa Double Badger 410 and 22 long rifle or 410 and 22 mag but there was almost nothing about the 20 gauge and the 22 long rifle and what little I did read about it was that people didn't like it because the barrels weren't regulated very well and they didn't like the front sight on the Chiapa Double Badger because they didn't feel like it was fine enough for them to do precision 22 shooting. So anyway, that's what this is review is about. I didn't want to buy a survival gun that I could hunt with. What I wanted was a cool hunting gun that if I needed to, I could use it in a survival situation. That's what this review's on. So let's go out and see how accurate is it. Let's see how, how far off the barrels are dysregulated, if they're dysregulated. Let's see, can I actually shoot a flying target out of the air with it? And just look at the overall function of the weapon. And final note before we get started, if you haven't heard about Chiapa Firearms, they're Italian made. They have reviews from being excellent, fantastic, wonderful, all the way down to terrible, the fit and finish is bad, poor quality control, poor customer service. They make some guns that are super expensive, well over $1,000, and they make some that are cheap. This gun I paid around 354, which is a little bit more than you normally would because right now we're in the middle of the pandemic, political, hoard ammo, hoard rifles and all the prices of everything have gone up, but that's okay. I decided to take the plunge and purchase this and do review on it and see, is it is it gonna be a good truck gun? Is it gonna be a good little hunting gun? And if it's not, I'll get rid of it. So that's what I decided to do. This review is for you, so let's get to it. All right, as I promised, this is the Chiapa Double Badger, right? As you can see, make sure to show you that the firearm is unloaded. Okay, and you can see this 22 rifle on the top, 20 gauge on the bottom, and it's pretty compact. It's a little heavy for, uh, it's five pounds, five pounds and some change. You can kind of get a look at it. I went ahead and already put this little cheek pad with a storage case on it to just uh, keep rounds in it. Anyway, that's that's what it looks like. And you open it by, it's a little stiff, put the, the butt stock underneath your arm, 
lever down on this and open. And that's how you put in the 22 and the 12 gauge. So I guess first things first, let's go ahead and see where this thing's shooting. It's got a rear peep. The rear sight's a peep sight. Front sight's fiber optic. And so one of the complaints was that <clears throat> it's difficult for precision shooting because given this peep and the front bead, front bead's too big on this fiber optic for precision shooting. But like I said, I'm looking at shooting squirrels, a grouse maybe, uh, a rabbit um, <clears throat> with the 22 part. So how accurate does it have to be? We're gonna be at 25 yards and sight this thing in. Okay, so <clears throat> after we sight it in, we're gonna try three different kinds of ammo. So we got CCI mini mags, we have Winchester Super X, and we have 22 stingers. So <clears throat> depending, um, I expect to get different groups with this different ammo. We'll just see what shoots best in this. Um, I've always had real good luck with CCI mags, but you never know. At 25 yards, that's not too bad. <laughs> Seems pretty dialed in right from the factory. Um, I got a couple in the bowls and then three on the outside. Let's go ahead and test the other ammo. This was the CCI mini mags. Okay, just to review, this is my group and this is like, I think it's three inches. <clears throat> this is my group with the CCI mini mags at 25 yards. This is my group, open way up. This is with the Winchester Super X. And this is my group with the Velocitors. Now, it's true that I got a flyer up here, and that might be me, but I have one, two, three, four, right there. And that's substantially smaller than what I have here. Now there's some other variables that could have made me shot this tighter and that's that I practiced with the trigger now, right? Because it was the third target I shot. I'm getting used to the sights, so we can't take that out, but I would be happy shooting Velocitors or CCIs, mini mags. I think I'm gonna stay away from the Winchester stuff. It doesn't look very accurate. All right, let me try some uh, offhand shots. All right, what you're seeing here is a fresh target six shots at 15 yards offhand and um, I went ahead and I mixed in both I was shooting CCI and stingers uh, these were these two these two and one of these was the stinger and those three were the CCI mag even though I got kind of a tighter group the first time offhand I'm shooting better with the CCI mini mag so at 15 yards offhand now that's not some sort of precision rifle, but that's plenty, plenty good to hunt a rabbit or a squirrel. And if you're back at 20, you can get a, uh, a rest or a brace like I was using, and you can get actually pretty darn good groups. Okay, we're gonna call this our uh, squirrel and rabbit test. So <clears throat> these are standard size clay pigeons, so definitely bigger than the three inch targets we were using but approximately the size of the kill zone of a cottontail or a jackrabbit or a squirrel. I'll be shooting from exactly 25 yards back there at the truck and I will shoot these offhand. So let's see if at 25 yards offhand, I could hit the kill zone with the Chiapa Double Badger on these mock squirrels. Okay, folks, so you saw it, uh, 25 yards offhand, hit both clay pigeons. I mean, hey, that's, this is not a competition rifle, but that's plenty good to shoot a rabbit or a squirrel, a big squirrel, um, with some practice. And again, I was using the CCI mini mags at 25 yards offhand. So not bad, so far, not bad. All right, now, part two, now that we got the 22, dialed in pretty good. I mean, not perfect, but pretty good. 
let's go ahead and see how the shotgun shoots with respect to the same point of aim and point of impact as the 22. Rumor has it, these barrels are dysregulated. So let's go ahead and see. Okay, what I'm gonna shoot um, are the game shocks. Uh, 20 gauge, these are game loads. These are federal ammunition, number eight shot, 20 gauge, seventh eighths ounce load. Let's see what this does. I'm gonna hold on the target the same way I would with using the, the ghost sight and the front pin. So let's see if my how my pattern lays out with respect to where the 22s are hitting. Okay, what you see here are just three little black sticky targets on a piece of cardboard. And there are a couple 22 holes in this, but we're gonna ignore that because I can tell which are which. Uh, the number eight shot will definitely look different than that. And I'm gonna step back to 15 yards and I'm going to use the sights and see how it patterns with respect to where the prior 22 bolts are hitting. Here we go. All right, I don't know if you can see that, but that's for sure patterning low. So I was aiming right here and we have just a few pellets above, but the majority of the pellets hit low. Not super low, but low. But I don't think that's big enough of a difference for me to worry about. I'm gonna try it again, change my hold a little bit and see if I can center this shot. That was actually quite a bit better. So <clears throat> I changed my hold just a little bit. I can probably adjust it a little bit more, but as you can see up here, there's way more pellets above and we got below and we have on the target. And the whole thing shifted up, I would say four inches changing my hold. So I don't think I'd have any trouble hitting um, a stationary grouse, a stationary squirrel or st stationary rabbit. All right, so we saw that the shotgun shooting a little bit of low to the point of aim or the 22, but that's okay. I made adjustments and I was able to bring it up four or five inches. And I think I could easily take a, a stationary squirrel or stationary rabbit, something that you actually have to aim the shotgun at. But what about a flying target? What about, can this thing actually shoot something on the move? And we all know that you don't aim a shotgun, not really, when you're, uh, shooting birds on the wing or clay pigeons. You point the shotgun, it's more like shooting a basket. So let's see, I'm not a great shotgun shot, but I'm gonna try to throw a clay pigeon, drop the pigeon thrower, and then shoot the clay. Here we go. All right, people, I'm gonna throw three birds, take three shots. You're gonna, what you see is what you get. I hope you'll be able to see the clay pigeons and whether or not I hit them. If I hit them, I hit them. If I don't, I don't. Uh, I'm an average shotgun shooter, so I should be able to, you know, hopefully hit one out of the three, but we'll see. All right, here we go. First one, I'm gonna load this up into the pigeon thrower. All right, here we go. All right, I got that one. I didn't get it great, but I did hit it. So yes, it appears that you can shoot birds on the wing with this gun. Um, let's try a different one. All right, second shot, number eight shot, small game load. Okay, I'm gonna load the thrower. Okay, here we go. did better that one okay I got that one I'm not smashing them but I'm hitting them okay so definitely so far I'm feeling like yes <clears throat> if I was uh, in a situation where I had to shoot at a, a pheasant or a, or something with this 20 gauge so far I'm two for two but I just went and opened my big mouth so I probably won't get this last one we'll see all right And again, I'm not necessarily, I'm not aiming high, not aiming low. I'm just shooting the shotgun like I would just shoot any other shotgun. Kind of, <clears throat> when it feels right, pull the trigger. All right, here goes the last one. Ah, 
got that one in half. So I hit all three of them, but I didn't crush any of them, which means the shotgun is shooting a little bit off, but I am getting some pellets into the bird. So it would appear that yes, you can shoot things on the wing with this. All right, next segment for all of you survival people out there who wonder like, well, what if I had to shoot buckshot out of this? Or what if I had to shoot a slug out of it for an emergency hunting situation? We're gonna go ahead and check that out. Uh, I loaded up some four pellet double lot buck in 20 gauge. I loaded up some uh, BB, steel BB in 20 gauge. But the, the buckshot's interesting, and I have some slugs that are coming, I don't have them now, but let's go ahead and look at the buckshot. But let's look at the penetration of the buckshot. Okay, folks, this is for you. Those of you wondering about a double-op buckload, uh, there's two water bottles. I'm gonna shoot this at about 10 yards. Let's see what happens. Well, that's definitely nothing scientific. Four double-op buck. I think you could, in a survival situation, maybe for sure defend yourself and maybe even harvest the deer at close, close range if you shot him in the net. So for those of you wondering, there you go. Uh, next, uh, when I get some slugs, we'll check those out. Okay, what you're about to watch is 20 gauge loaded with steel BBs, okay? What happens if you had the Chiapa double badger and you're out and you see a goose or you see a big duck. You can shoot a duck with BB, but let's see you see a goose. Let's see what this thing does. I'm gonna shoot at it from 15 yards. Well, it would appear that that looks like it's, um, the pattern was excellent. I got nice shots throughout. I'm confident that if that was a goose on the ground or uh, one flying over in close range, you would absolutely be able to take it down. All right. Well, we came out here and we tested the Chapel Double Badger. We looked at the regulation between the two barrels. Seems like the shotgun does shoot a little bit low, but easily compensated for. The 22 is reason hunting accurate at 25 yards and offhand at 15. I was able to knock some clays out of the sky with it. It seems like so far it's uh, gonna suit my purposes. I'm gonna have to give you an update once I actually go hunt. But here's one more thing I wanna show you that's really neat about this is the Chapa Double Badger because it folds in half, can easily slip in that little pocket behind your back seat, doesn't take up any space. Or if you want, you can take a backpack like this, put the Double Badger inside the backpack Zip it up, and there you go. I mean, it's a backpack gun. Talk about easy to carry around. Okay, final thoughts on the Chiapa Double Badger. <clears throat> I think, so far, based on what I know right now, this is a solid little combination gun. And I feel confident that I could take small game with the 22 and with the shotgun, uh, and eat. that even includes birds on the wing. If you don't realize it, if you take this back butt pad off, or this, this, this hard butt pad, and this, you don't actually don't need a recoil pad on this, uh, it just doesn't kick very much, and it's actually fairly heavy. If you take this off, there is a large hole in the back that goes and that connects the rifle action to the barrel. Well, in that hole, there's space for you to keep two shotgun shells and a small tube of 22 long rifle or there's space in there for you to uh, create a little survival kit or fishing kit or fire kit or whatever you want. So I took this off. I have a couple of shotgun shells in there and some 22 shells, but you could put in there whatever you want. In addition to make it handy, I put this little cheek rest pad on here. And since the shotgun tends to shoot low, if you put a cheek pad on, it can raise that point of impact. One other thing I want to warn you about is the triggers. And the triggers generally are backwards from this on a combination gun. Generally, the front trigger is the shotgun and the back trigger 
is the rifle. This configuration is different. The front trigger is the rifle. And since this is a 22 long rifle, we know you can't dry fire it. And it's very easy to accidentally grab that front trigger. Rifle barrels on top. Here's what I do to get over that. I keep a empty 22 shell in here to protect the firing pin. It just popped up to protect the firing pin and to protect this space right here, right there, where when the firing pin hits, if you didn't have a round in there, it would just start to chisel away at that metal. And so I wanna protect both the firing pin and the surface to make sure I get consistent ignitions on rimfire ammo. So I have just started keeping a empty 22 shell in there. And that way, if when I put the shotgun shell in, which actually happens has happened before, where I pull the trunk front trigger, instead of the back trigger, I am not damaging my rifle. So, that's one thing you wanna know. And this mechanism right here, that ejects, this thing right here, you want to make sure you keep this well lubed. Um, it moves in and out, and it's also pretty stiff, and so I would just keep working it in over and over again, put some lube in here on the sides, keep it well cleaned. That's pretty much all I got to say about it for right now. Um, so far, I'm glad I purchased it. I'm gonna see how it shoots slugs. I'm gonna see what kind of game I can take with it. And I will do a second video coming up on <clears throat> slugs, as well as have I shot any game animals with it. So stay tuned for that, and hopefully this rifle holds up. And I hope you appreciated this episode, and if you like this episode, please hit the subscribe button or the like button or both. All right, have a great day.